Welcome to the Senior View. Isn't it wonderful to have spring here? The snow is gone <laughs> and the sun is shining. I'd like to introduce you some, to two very special guests. And of course, you know Amy Beck, our Assistant Director. And we have Jen Belize, who is the Director of Community Relations at Golden Pond Assisted Living, right? right. And we have, we're so fortunate today, because I know he's a busy man, David Dowd. And he's from Cell Mom's House. And he's the founder and president. And so nice of you to come today. Well, thank you for having me, Mary. Very good. And uh, we thought it would be interesting to listen to the both of them um, regarding you know, making that decision whether to sell. When is the best time? You know, what, what, is, what happens you know, you, you know, as you go through? And it's not always easy. You, you know, you love your home, but you know the time comes. I know in a couple of years I'm going to have to be making this decision, okay? So let's listen to David and Jen and, and see what good advice they can give us in getting started, okay? So, David, we're going to turn this over to you. All righty. And how do you get started with somebody? A phone call? Well, uh, it's, sometimes it's a phone call. It's a response to one of our ads or something like that. But uh, more often than not, it's a call from someone like Jen or perhaps someone that met me at a seminar that I do from time to time, and I've done them at Golden Pond. And the seminars are on easy transitions, how to downsize and sell a home. So um, generally speaking, people reach out when they're in the thinking stage, yes. you know, before they've already begun. And they say, what do I do? I'm kind of overwhelmed. What do I do with the house? That, that's mm -hmm. the, the basic question that we try to answer. And it depends on their situation. There's no one size fits all. You know, the homes are different, the people's situations are different, and their motivations for moving. Or are different. Sometimes it's health reasons, sometimes it's an empty nest situation and they just um, don't need the big home anymore. It could be financial reasons. So um, that's a motivating factor. But regardless of the motivation, you got to take a look at the house itself. Now um, you can go with a, a realtor, you know, and realtors will give you good advice. There's a lot of good realtors out there that'll help with the situation. But the reason we did sell mom's house was to f focus on seniors and their adult children. And to answer your question plainly, we start with strategy. So we try to figure out what are your goals, what's your time frame, what's your motivation for, me, for moving, what's the situation with the house. Now, not, not just the value of the house, but all the stuff in it. You know, it's all those, that lifetime of possessions that's a bigger problem. Yes, yes. You know, anybody can sell a house. But, but dealing with the family and trying to make that transition less stressful and less overwhelming is why we founded Sell Mom's House. David, I think you could probably write a book, <laughs> right? Is that what you're going to do when you retire? Well, perhaps. <laughs> we got some good war stories, I can tell you that. Yeah. We really do in a lot yes. of situations and a lot you of... You must be a very special person <laughs> to, to, to go in and be sensitive to their feelings. And you, you seem very kind. Well, thank you. Um, you know, you have to deal with the situation and the people. You know, it's a people business. Uh, whether it's real estate or um, you know assisted living or independent living or whatever what amazed me I came to this kind of late in life because I've had other businesses mm -hmm. and I, I uh, <clears throat> tell people I'm an accidental realtor because I got into flipping houses and it was mm -hmm. looking for houses that needed um, work that led me to the senior market because a lot of times seniors just haven't upgraded their homes so in doing that I got to meet some people and help them in situations, and then I discovered a wonderful thing, and I'm sure that um, Amy knows this. There's a huge infrastructure, ecosystem I like to call it, to help seniors. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there, and once I got into the business, I was just amazed at the um, support network that fortunately is out there for uh, seniors and their adult children, but we found that when it comes to selling the home, and particularly downsizing, there wasn't a one um, place to go for uh, as a hub of and so back to the your question Mary we start with a strategy that tries to encompass what's the family's goals what's the needs of the house mm -hmm. and then we we kind of go from there mm-hmm mm -hmm. I see and now do you, do you help some a couple let's say or somebody who's living alone and needs to sell or wants to sell like if they do need help in, in packing things and in sorting things out do you help them all the way through? Yes. Yes, we try to help them with the whole process. But we don't do it all ourselves. As I mentioned, there's a big infrastructure out there. 
So what we do is we provide free management services to manage the process. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, because ultimately we're going to get paid from selling the house or from buying the house and, mm -hmm. and, and, and fixing it up and reselling it. So we try to bundle in our management services and the strategy and then we reach out to vendors in the community who do the individual pieces. Uh, maybe I should give you an example, okay? Right. Uh, <clears throat> I got a call from uh, Jewish Family Services for, can you help this woman who needs to move to subsidized housing? And she needs to move in a hurry. I had a similar situation in Worcester. You know, people wait for subsidized housing. They don't always have a strategy. And then they get the call and they have to put some money down and move within a few weeks or, or a month. Mm -hmm. So we often get these kinds of calls. I got to move, what do I do? Well, um, two different situations. In the Worcester situation, we actually bought the house and um, we rehabbed it and, and, and resold it. Actually, I hooked her up with a contractor who, who bought the house. But the cool thing was, we advanced funds for her deposit at senior housing. We um, let her take what she wanted and, and go, but we brought in a move manager that went through all her stuff with her. Actually, we brought in an appraiser because she had some nice pieces. We brought in uh, an antique uh, dealer who bought some of those pieces on the spot. Then we brought in a, a, a couple of other uh, consignment type folks who took some pieces or bought some pieces. And then the charity guy, uh, who was a wonderful man, and he does direct charity. So he took a lot of the rest of the stuff, including clothing. And in the end, um, what was left, the contractor cleaned out. So the woman didn't have to do much except decide, what do I, what do I want to take? You know, and then she took it, and, and we moved her right over. In the case of Jewish Family Services, it was a little more complex. Th there we had to sell the house, and so we um, did the same thing. We arranged for the mover to be to wait until the home was sold to be paid. For example, because uh, she was, you know, she had some situations and and uh, didn't have all the money for all the tasks, and we got her moved over again with the move manager and so forth very quickly. And we took care of the house and ultimately, uh, you know, paid everybody and and that's how we get paid. So uh, to answer your question, we we deliver the service, but we don't do it all ourselves. So it's good teamwork. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I do believe, Amy, that we do have, um, I, don't, I forget their name, um, but it was a group of, um, who go out and, and help people pack and, and right. sort through things like paperwork, et cetera. And we do have a lot of that information at the Senior Center if people Great. are looking for, you know, how do I start? Sure. And, 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 and this is nice to, because I think people don't know where to start. They, they, they ask themselves, oh, and it seems overwhelming, and then it, it gets pushed off and it becomes mm -hmm. bigger and bigger every single day that they're thinking about it. And I think it's great that, you know, there is a place to come for the resources. There is somebody to turn to, like, you know, in your situation where you have, um, can do some of the building or helping them with the, the things that need to be done and, and to advise people. So mm -hmm. the information is there. So check with the senior center, you know, look mm -hmm. around. The internet's a great source to find realtors who, who specialize in this type of thing, because not every realtor is specialized in dealing with seniors and showing them which you know, direction to it, go. It's a difficult time in a person's life. Absolutely. Your decision making and, and their children may be living away in another state and aren't available, you know, and so there's a lot that goes into it. And you must see a lot too, Jen. You we, must hear a lot do. of stories. And we do. I, I think echoing what David said was, you know, it's a, it's a business of communication and really relationships. You have to find those people to help everybody along the way with that process and that strategy. And that's something that when people call us, it's, they think they may be ready for what it is that we do, but oftentimes there's 10 other steps that have to happen mm -hmm. before they can get to us, um, whether that's outreach, whether that's finding health insurance, whether that's finding somebody to help them sell a property, whether that's so many different things. Um, and so we, we count on people like David in our network of professionals to really execute all those steps so that things are smoother when somebody comes in, so it's more relaxed. You have a greater chance of success because you've set all of the, these things up to, to really do well. Instead of uh, not reacting to them, you're being more proactive to them. Um, David and I met about a year ago, and he has personally helped us with a couple of transactions that have really alleviated a lot of stress on families. And I, I have seen it firsthand and how important it is to have those, 
those people along the way that can help make a smoother transition for people. It's such an emotional time for mm -hmm. people. Oh, yeah. And I <coughs> think unless Excuse you've me. been in it personally, that you can really appreciate or understand. I'm sure you see it every mm -hmm. day as well and how difficult this part of the journey can be. And um, just to have those resources is so important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not just the person going through it, it's the family. Exactly. You know, the, the, exactly. the kids yeah. aren't ready. The mom and dad may be ready to right. move, but the kids aren't ready for mom and dad to move right. out of the house that they grew up in. Exactly. You know, and so there's a lot of hand-holding. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes exactly. the kids <laughs> are saying, you know, <laughs> mom's no longer safe here. Yes. That's you know, right. that, that's an off, oftentimes a factor. We had a woman, um, you know, leaving the stove on, and her, her kids said, we want her out of here as soon as possible. What can we do? You know, so we pre presented a couple different alternatives, putting it on the market, buying it, and so forth. But we try to involve the family, involve their estate, their uh, elder care law attorney, uh, whoever, community support resources, mm -hmm. to again create a strategy and then execute that strategy to deal with the stuff, and then to ultimately sell the house, which is um, an, you know another story unto itself. How to how to best go about that? Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Well, you two have really brought us a lot of information today, <laughs> and. Um, it's so interesting to hear, and it was so fortunate that in this time of our lives that we have you people in, in, you know, in the support group from the Senior mm -hmm. Center. Um, I know when I was working there as an outreach supervisor, you know, um, I had many people call me, the, the adult children, and say, Mary, my mother is ready to move, you know, and, and um, so we would talk to them, and you know, but I always tried to talk to the um, client first without the adult children, you know, around to get their feelings, sure. you know, because that's what's first. That's what is first. Sometimes the process is a lot longer too, isn't it? I mean, someone may be starting to think, I need to get out of a home or I need to, you know, but I'm not ready yet. But in about five years, <laughs> you know, and sometimes it right. comes sooner than they think, but, you know, it, it's not always now it's time to sell and here I am, boom. It's sometimes there's a process and do you help with them uh, at different points along that way? They, or where would they turn to if they were starting to think but they're not quite ready to put it on the market tomorrow? Well, that's a great, great question, Amy. And, and what we would do is meet with them anyway mm -hmm. and try to, again, come up with the strategy in, in the time frame. We kind of have a, a motto that's ready when you are. You know, right. if you've got a, information is empowering. Uh, the process can be overwhelming. If they want to stay for a few years because they're enjoying their house, then God bless them, that's the best thing for them. You know, but if they're saying to us, oh, it's going to take me a year to clean this place out, you know, I'll tell them, really, you know, we, we, we could probably condense that to 60 to 90 days if we got some, somebody in here to help you. And if mm -hmm. we got a dumpster mm -hmm. and we got some heavy guys to do the lifting, you mm -hmm. know, and then we take them through the actual process and we explain to them how we can take that year and condense it down to 60 or 90 days. And it really, it's a quality of life thing. Right. If you're staying here because you want to, great. If you're staying here because you're a slave to your house or you're a slave to your stuff, then we're here to help you, you know? And so we'll, we'll do it in their time frame. Maybe I should give you a couple suggestions <coughs> on how we break that up. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So we tell them, look, don't start with that stuff in the basement, in the attic that you've held on to all these years. Start with what you're going to keep. So you break it into three or four different categories and you go around in a circle through the categories. The stuff I'm going to keep, especially if you've got a place, you know you go into uh, <coughs> Golden Pond, for instance. And then you've got a smaller apartment. We do our seminars. We give them a little map. We've got a great handout that here's, you know, you can map things from one location to the other. So we're going to take this couch or that couch or whatever. And we tell them, you know what, it's a good time to treat yourself. Buy some new furniture. There's furniture today that will fit the smaller space. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep it if you don't want to. Treat yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these elders, you know, they want to say, well, all the money for the kids, God bless them. But, but, you know, it's not always the best thing. Anyway, start with what you're going to keep. Then think about the giveaways to the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, but they won't, my son won't clean out his stuff. Well, give them a list, circulate a list to the family. Mm -hmm. Here's the items, here's the date. I want to know if you're going to take it, and here's the date you have to take it. Great, that stuff's handled. Then you go into um, things that are valuable that you want to sell. We've got sources for that to um, you know, buy antiques or whatever. And then the giveaways and the rest is junk. Mm -hmm. So you do that, you get the uh, junk pile going. Oh, there's one more important pile, the I'm not sure. So the I'm not, I'm not sure pile, <laughs> 
you go back to again and again and again. Mm -hmm. On the third time, it's either a keeper or it's not. And if you're not sure, let's get rid of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> we condense that whole thing and we tell them, look, it shouldn't take, it doesn't have to take more than 60 or 90 days to get ready, you know? But that's the stuff. Then you've got to deal with the house. So another thing we deal with in the seminars uh, is, is um, should we fix things or not? Should we spend money on the house? And if you want, mm -hmm. I'll comment on that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> first of all, there's a lot of good realtors out there and realtors should be able to advise you on what to fix and what not to fix. Our general feeling is you fix things that are one up. If it's the only thing, if you got a rug when you first come in the house that's really just kind of had it or that door is broken or something like that, one thing you fix. But if the house hasn't been fixed in years, as soon as you fix one thing, the one thing next to it's gonna not look so good. <laughs> so don't spend a lot of money. You probably won't get it back. Maybe just do a good paint job. <laughs> Maybe just a good paint job. If that's the only thing, then, then it's probably worth it. You'll probably get mm -hmm. your return on investment. But otherwise, you know, you're gonna <clears throat> be realistic and a, and a realtor should be able to advise you on that. But some want it perfect. We don't want it perfect, you know. We, we wanna be able to sell it. So we're gonna give you advice on that. And by the way, when we do sell it, it's not with um, the Sell Mom's House brand out front. We're associated with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. So that's the sign that would mm -hmm. be in front of the house. But again, there's lots of good realtors, and you should pick a realtor you're comfortable with. You know, if, if you're not comfortable with them, if they're, if they're um, not giving you advice, or if you're feeling pressured, or this or that, because you're hiring them. They're, you're, they're, work, you're, they're working for you, you know, and the goal is to get you the most for your house, obviously, uh, but also to help you along the way and hold your hand a little bit and um, make the process less stressful, not more stressful. So uh, interview two or three realtors and see who you're comfortable with. And listen on price, but compare them. The highest price isn't always the right strategy, especially if the house is in poor condition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes well, people will promise you a high price just to get the listing. Uh, what you need is a realistic situation, and they should bring in a lot of comparable sales, uh, which any good realtor can do, of the homes in the market. Now in Harkington, you've got a nice advantage that it's a hot market. You know, days on market are generally in the 60 to 80 zone, it's 60 to 80 days to sell a house. Prices this year are up four or five percent over a year ago at least. And the year before that was up like 12 percent or something like that. It was really crazy because we were coming off the bottom. But you can sell a home quickly here in Hockington. So it gets back to lifestyle. You know, don't, don't be a slave to the house. You know, achieve your, your goals and, um, and turn that page. And that's what's so wonderful about going to a place like mm -hmm. Golden Pond, you know. Uh, or moving in with family you know if, if you've got a senior that's living a home alone and they're spending all their time in front of the tv they're isolated they're not enjoying their life as much as they could be i know you both see this so um what we try to do is be a catalyst to move the whole process along mm -hmm. and coach them on the way do you ever work with like bay path elder care services we've had referrals uh from them yeah and we have worked mm -hmm. with uh, them and a lot of other wonderful uh, so, uh, you know, pro Asian providers. Service. Yeah, providers. Yes, sure, yes, sure. Yes. I think we're just so fortunate to have this team. It's like a team effort. We really do. It isn't just the realtor. It's, you know, people like you, Jan, Amy, you know, they pass. And I think people don't realize always that there are these resources in a community. Right. You know, and again, until you've, you're in it, you don't realize how much help there actually is out there, which is mm -hmm. so wonderful. And if I don't know something, I'll call David and he knows the person, he'll always know the person mm -hmm. to connect with. Um, and just as a personal example, we had a resident of Golden Pond who came to us and we weren't sure if she was staying or going back to her home. She wound up staying. Um, and we had had a conversation a couple of times and she would say, I have to, f my son says, I have to fix the kitchen and the bathrooms before I sell my house. I, I can't even think about it. It's so stressful. Mm -hmm. And um, we were having a seminar. David, David came and did the seminar and her son came and David said, don't, don't fix anything. It's, it wasn't a one up. It was a five up if they were going to fix something. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, he went in and she said, I, I think you'll have to verify this. I think the house was sold before they had their first open house. Oh, wow. And it was that quick and the advice was that accurate and it was simply a matter of getting it out there, listing it, and um, our resident was so happy and she actually got more than she thought she would get even without fixing the kitchens and the bathroom. That's great. That stress of having that all done, I think they cleaned that yep. house out in 
30 it was days. it was a great situation. It, I don't know that it, I don't know that it ever happens yeah. like that often, but it certainly well, was very smooth and a lot less stressful for everybody. And I think that's important. It doesn't have to be stressful. I mean, it's overwhelming when you're looking at the big picture, but it, mm -hmm. if you break it down, it's like anything. Start breaking it down. Talk to someone. That may be your answer right there, right. and maybe you'll know after talking to them. I, I do want to stay, or they may say, "Yes, it's time. I'm ready to go." And so. You know, start the process. Don't be afraid to talk to people, ask questions. Y it is up to you. You decide. You, you're the one pulling mm -hmm. the trigger, making the decision of when to go. But, but start the process and talk to people if you're starting to question yourself, I would think. That's right. You're not alone. The That's trend. Right. You're That's not true. alone. And you have these wonderful people to help you. And um, all you have to do is call Amy at the Senior Center, and she can direct you also. You know, Bay Path is a wonderful organization, and we're so fortunate to have it and, uh, in min many areas of our lives as we age. And um, I want to thank you so much for coming, and thank you, Jen. You're very welcome. And thank Thanks you, David. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amy, is there anything you'd like to share about the Senior Center? Or? Well, as always, we're starting with new programs every day, every month. We've got something new. Um, come check out walking clubs and... You know, it's spring, it's time to get out and hit the trails and start moving. We have exercise. You know, check out our website, check out our Hilltopper, which is our newsletter, and you can see all the new things coming every month. We've got big events, we've, you know, mm -hmm. coming in, parties, you know, everything going on. There's not, there's not a day that's not busy. No, <laughs> so. I know. And it's wonderful to walk in and feel the energy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, people are sitting down, drinking coffee by yeah. the fireplace and gabbing away. It's a busy place. It's a busy place. That's great. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, when yeah. you're thinking of downsizing, we have our thrift store. And if you want to get rid of oh, things from yes. your home, that's another thing. You can bring things here and we can, we don't sell it for you. You're donating them, but it helps us fund our programs also going on. That's right. So there's a that's lot right. of things that check out to see what's going on. That's right. That's right. And um, I think it's wonderful with... Um, you know, how many programs we have in helping people, assisting them, get, giving rides, exactly. volunteers to the, to the doctor, um, shopping. You need food, you, you, you need a ride, well, call the Senior Center and ask for George Robinson. And, That's right. Oh, he's our wonderful bus driver, <laughs> the famous George Robinson. <laughs> and also, on Monday mornings, we have um, an art group that come together. You just bring in your supplies. It's just friendly painting together. Um, no charge. We just sit there and just paint away for a couple of hours. And, and I've done two seascapes since I've started this. So, because before I went to work, I did artwork and went to art shows for 10 years, you know. And so I'm getting back into it. And, and so if you want to paint, come on in, in all mediums, okay? And um, so you are welcome. Okay, again, I want to thank you so much for coming. And you have a good night. Different words describe different people. But in the eyes of the law, there's one that fits us all. Human right number seven. We're all equal before the law. What are human rights? Find out at youthforhumanrights.org. HCAM TV showing movies? That's right. Dive in Drive is a new show on HCAM. Join Mike and I as we present some B movies. Movies that have piqued the two Mike's interest. And not to mention, they're also free. We'll give you some interesting tidbits about the cast and crews. And point out some of the reasons these are classic B films. So check out the HCAM TV website at HCAM.TV for movie days and showtimes. Hello, I'm Christine Maselli of Absolutely Yoga. And this is our Yoga Time Out, a short segment to take a break from your busy day and connect with your breath and some subtle movement. So join me, feet are hip width apart, parallel. The knees are soft, doesn't matter what you're wearing or what room you're in. We'll take a nice deep breath in, inhale up. Palms come together, exhale and pull them down to your heart. And again, we're going to inhale, reaching up, gaze follows the hands, Exhale, coming down. One more time, breathing in and breathing out. 
Hands pressing together, let the tailbone be heavy, the navel pulling toward the spine. Breathing here in mountain pose for three, and two, and one. Take a nice deep breath in. Let the crown of your head reach up just a bit taller, abdominals engaged. Then breathe out and relax. Shake things out. The arms are loose, the knees are loose. Good. We'll take one more deep breath in. Inhale, reaching up. And on the exhale, bring the hands down and let your hands find your hips now. Going to step forward with one foot, stepping back with the opposite foot, letting that back foot be on a nice tight angle, bending into the front knee and gently squaring your hips toward me. We're going to reach the arms up overhead. We're coming into what is called warrior one. And if this is too much, bend the elbows and don't bend that front knee as much. Looking straight ahead and breathing here, toes are spread, front knee is bent, back leg is long. Take an inhale, lift a little higher if it's comfortable. Exhale, straighten your front leg, chin comes in. Inhale, bend the front knee and lift. Exhale, coming down. And again, breathing in, coming up. Breathing out, coming down. One more time, inhale as you lift up. Exhale as you come down. This time we come back up to warrior one, drop the shoulders and breathe right here for three, and two, and one. Take an inhale, lengthen a bit more. Exhale, hands come down. We step up, we shake things out, and we'll work on the other side. So finding those hips, big step back, the heel comes down, nice tight diagonal, squaring the hips, bend into that front knee, arms reaching up overhead, shoulders relax. Breathing here for three, two, one. Now take an inhale, if you can, lift the ribs, maybe even look up. Exhale, straighten the leg and come down. Inhale, bend the knee and lift. Exhale and release. So we bend the front leg as we lift and look up. We straighten the front leg as we come down. And one more time, breath moving the body and come down. This time we lift up to warrior one, relax the shoulders, engage the belly, maybe bend the elbows, and we breathe and hold right here for three, two, and one. Take an inhale, lift a little higher. As you exhale, release, step forward, and shake things out. From here, we'll return to mountain pose. We inhale up. Big exhale, bring the hands to the heart center. From here, one hand to the belly, one hand to the chest. And to finish, we'll take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Christine Maselli, and this is our yoga timeout. Have a great day.